So another situation when I consider playing for the nuts that is important to evaluate is whether or not a nut flush draw is going to be good. Now, I'd like to apologize in advance to any stats gurus. It's been 17, 18 years since I've been in school. And if I have some terminology incorrect or something like that, I believe the figures are right. Um, but if I do something silly, uh, don't laugh at me too hard. Uh, but it's we, let's just imagine we have the king and the queen of spades. Uh, how can my flush make the nuts? So if we have the king and queen of spades, so if we have exactly two spades out of our four cards, uh, and it's not including the ace of spades, it's pretty easy to calculate the probability of one of the other eight players receiving the ace of spades. Um, because if we know our four cards... There's 48 cards left in the deck that's going to be distributed among the other eight players. They each get four cards, so there's 32 cards dealt to those players. So it's easy to understand that, you know, two-thirds of the time, 32 out of 48 or two-thirds of the time, someone is going to have, the, someone is going to be dealt the ace of spades in a nine-handed game if we don't have it and we have two other spades. So... That, that's pretty easy to calculate, but it's a little more difficult to calculate what the probability is that that player that was dealt the ace of spades was also dealt another spade. So to see if they have the potential to have a higher flush than we do. Now, this is assuming all, all these numbers are calculated pre-flop, and it has nothing to do with the, the cards on the board. Um, so if you can imagine, if we have two spades, and they have the ace of spades, then out of the 13 spades in the deck, there are 10 missing spades, and out of the, we have four cards, they have the ace of spades, so there's 37 non-spade cards left, 47 cards total. So to cal calculate the probability that they do have another spade, you have to calculate the probability that they don't have another spade. Um, so the probability that they don't would be uh, 37, 37 non-spades out of 47 cards for your first card. Your second card would be 36 out of 46. And your third card would be 35 out of 45. Now, by taking these uh, fractions and multiplying them together, you get the probability that they don't have another spade. I don't know. Doesn't. Don't. Um is around 48%. So the reciprocal of that, the probability that they did get another spade would be 52%. 52%. So looking at the whole picture, so 67% of the time somebody has the ace of spades and 52% of the time they get another spade. So multiplying those probabilities together, the probability someone is dealt a suited ace is those two multiplied together, which is 35% of the time. So 35% of the time means I really don't want to depend on my nut flush being good in all situations, but my non-nut flush, I'm sorry, but the fact that you're playing high-low means some of the time you're going to have a made low hand and you're going to have a non-nut flush draw that very well can be good. Um, so the fact that it's a split pot game means when we have a one-way hand and we have the potential for this type of two-way hand, uh, we, have the, we have the ability to play it strong in certain situations because, uh, because we're not only dependent on that non-nut flush draw to scoop the pot like we would in PLO.